Hey, are you even listening? Apples in the human world are worth the trip. Hey guys, Kiwi here. In this video, I'll be breaking down the new Death Note 2020 one-shot, along with discussing why Death Note never received a sequel, even being as successful and popular as it was, and still is in some cases. With that being said, warning is spoilers for the original Death Note show, along with some spoilers for the one-shot, although I will try to keep things vague for you, and let's jump right into this. So, if you're a big Death Note fan, let me know because I've been one my entire life. It's probably one of my favorite animes just because it was just such an intense thriller grounded in reality. I loved the show when I was a kid, got the manga, got my own cute little death note as you do, watched the original Japanese live action movies, and I was recently disappointed yet amused by the more so recent Netflix original live action adaptation. That being said, I always wanted more Death Note. I always wanted more story. There was that one pilot comment at the end of issue 0 or whatever the extra issue was where this kid gets the notebook with an eraser that brings people back to life if you erase their name, but that's all we really ever got. I didn't know this was coming out until the day of, and I almost crapped my pants. I was already having a busy day, but this was just icing on the cake. I legit looked up the Death Note soundtrack on Apple Music threw it on and started reading. Instantly, I was hooked, it felt like Death Note, it was just so interesting, and in so many ways, but in three main reasons, this new one-shot sequel story truly shows why there was never a full sequel show. So, let's jump into this one shot and discuss exactly why there never was a Death Note sequel. This story is 80 or so pages long, it's free to read, and it's actually incredible the amount of content and story that they shoved in here. Like this video and show some support if you're as hyped as me about the return of more Death Note content, and I'd like to get this video out there for as many people to see as possible. YouTube tends to hinder you and not recommend your video or show it in sub boxes when you create a video covering something different different than what you normally would. Now back to the 2020 one shot, you can tell that they put a lot of time and effort into thinking all of this through, which is the beginning of one of the reasons as to why there was never a sequel. In a world where the events of Death Note occurred, where do you take the story from there? Are there new interesting ways that you can think of using the Death Note that we haven't already seen from the first show? How did the world react to the events of the show, and how did humanity and the characters that survived live on with the knowledge of what happened to Light Yagami, L, among others? This one shot is an amazing story because they actually did an entire Death Note story without ever having a human use a Death Note. It's kind of crazy to think of, but that's the first big thing. Maybe the creators think that they've done everything that they can with the Death Note in the main show, so the story was showing what they could do in the Death Note world without actually having a human use the Death Note to kill someone. Unless they bring back that eraser from the pilot comic, which would be kind of weird. I feel like they shouldn't do that. Once someone dies, it should be final. There shouldn't be a way to undo an impactful death to the story. It'll just feel like a cartoon superhero character coming back to life. Imagine if they could have erased L's name in the Death Note, that would have undone so much impact on the show. So no, as much as I liked L, it's good that once they decided to kill him off, they kept it that way. The pilot manga was created before the actual main story with the Light and L, and I'm glad that they didn't bring the Death Eraser into the main show. I could create a discussion around if bringing back the Death Eraser is a good or bad idea, but that's another topic for another time. The Eraser was not canon in the main show, nor does it appear to be in either of the sequel one-shots. It makes sense to not spit out a bunch of sequels and kind of degrade the quality when you don't actually have a good story to tell, and if that's the case, I respect them for not being sellouts, as they only produce content when they feel like they have a strong enough idea to do so. They struck gold with the original Death Note, and I guess they just don't want to tarnish its good name. Kinda reminds me of Vince Gilligan with Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, but I digress. The second main reason is that if we wanted a true sequel to Death Note, which is kind of what this one shot is a glimpse of, 
we'd live in the same universe post Kira with all of the surviving characters of the show. It must have been a difficult task to figure out how the world would adapt to the events of Kira and just how to delicately sort of tell that because you don't want to mess with the canon and have the future kind of sound stupid, so this story tells it wonderfully, stating things such as they study Kira in school but mostly as an example of evil, even though there is still a following for him. This story gives so much exposition as to how the world has gone on after the events of the show, and it's more than I could have asked for. I wasn't expecting any of this at all. I was kind of just expecting them to not even address it, but it was just really just, oh my god, I could just gush about it. Also, this isn't the first one-shot that Death Note has done, it's the second. They originally had a Death Note sequel one-shot come out, mainly focusing on Nier taking up the mantle as L about three years after the events of the original story. Not much happens other than some insight on Nier's character, and honestly it wasn't that interesting. This new 2020 one-shot however, geez, it just really gave us everything we wanted as a Death Note fan in one little nice story. We have the smart main character getting the Death Note, meeting Ryuk in his bedroom, figuring out how to use it and what his plan will be, along with facing up against L, or rather Nier, along with broadcasting things over TV, and yeah, without spoiling too much, just all that good stuff we know and love from the original show. The original show really grabbed a lot of people's attention with the whole Light versus L situation during the first 2-3 to three episodes, and I feel heavy nostalgia for that when I read through this comic. On one hand, you could give them a hard time for repeating things, but I think that they're trying to hit those same points on purpose to give us that same solid Death Note vibe along with the nostalgia for how the original all began. So I won't spoil too much here, but some of the characters that survived the original show are back, and they can still see Ryuk as they touched the Death Note way back when. It must have been difficult to write this into the story knowing that there are good guys who survived and not only have the knowledge of the the Death Note so they'd recognize it being used, but they can also see Ryuk which came into place during this story. And here's the third big reason, as the 2020 one-off states, we live in a time where it would be almost impossible to do what Light did in the original show and get away with it without being seen. With cell phones and screens and cameras everywhere, everything is constantly being recorded. Not only would it be incredibly difficult for someone to accomplish the same tasks that Light did out in the open, in this universe where N and others can see Ryuk even on camera, that means that if the user of the Death Note was ever caught outside with Ryuk walking around like Light iconically would, they'd be instantly spotted as the user. So we can't have that in the story. That being said, most of this story is told with the user containing himself within his bedroom, along with Ryuk traveling underground and popping up at certain locations to perform various requested actions by our main character. It works for a single 80 or so page one shot, but could they really do a true sequel show under these circumstances, mostly having him operate from his bedroom? In a world post Kira, where everyone is aware of the power of the Death Note, especially after this one shot where Ryu can be spotted and cameras are everywhere, could they ever come back with a full on sequel? Well, no, but yes. Again, semi-spoilers for the ending of the one-shot, but our protagonist would have actually gotten off scot-free if it wasn't for the Shimigami King throwing in a rule last minute. Makes sense why he did so, so something like this doesn't happen again because it's kind of ridiculous in just an amazing way. Along with Ryuk not even telling the main character about this new rule because the character told Ryuk to never return. So I kind of want to have an entire discussion about that in general, but the protagonist had such a perfect plan and even Ryuk said so. Not only that, but he actually had a plan so smart that N admitted defeat for the first time ever after taking up the mantle as L. So, it's possible to have a character in the future so smart in certain ways that they could still pull off some crazy stuff, but they wouldn't just want a clone of Light Yagami, just some prodigy, some, you know, young genius, and this new protagonist was already similar enough, even though they kind of twisted it in a different way without him realizing that he was as smart as he actually was. Now, if they wanted to keep Ryuk around, yes, this would be difficult to create, you know, a sequel and have him around, knowing that people 
can see them, but they could easily have a new Shimigami come into the human world that wasn't seen by the characters from the original show. Maybe have Ryuk pop up for a story arc or two, but not until at least like halfway through the sequel show. In this new hypothetical sequel, have the main character be attached to a new Shimigami, and then have Ryuk maybe show up as a cameo or something. Now, they do leave this universe open-ended by the end of the one-shot, so it's possible for Ryuk to return under a new owner of his Death Note, or any Shimigami, it's possible for any Death Note to be dropped again, causing a situation of sorts. And also, I love the way that this story messes with time near the beginning of the story. It lets us know about how long after Death Note this story is taking, there's a bit of a time skip there, along with catching us up with just how the world has been affected by Kira, and then also the actions of our main protagonist ends up changing the world as well by the end of the one shot. Now if you guys want me to do a full spoiler review discussing the entire story of the one shot, breaking it down and giving my full opinions, be sure to let me know in the comments section below. There's some funny stuff in that book, the Trump is in it, like what? Maybe one day I'd like to review the original Death Note show as well, but who knows, I still need a lot of support to undertake a project like that. And as I said earlier in the video, I'd appreciate a like on the video if you've enjoyed anything I've said today, or honestly, if you just got to the end of the video in general, I appreciate it, thank you, I'm always thankful with you guys helping me appease the YouTube algorithm, especially on a video like this, which isn't something that I'd normally cover, liking, commenting, watching the entire video, and subscribing off of this video actually does help tell YouTube that it's a good video and that you guys enjoyed it. Hit that bell notification for more breakdowns and reviews in the near future, as YouTube is very selective with what it puts in your sub box nowadays even when you do subscribe. Thank you guys all so much for watching, let me know if you want more Death Note content on the channel, and until next time, I'll talk to you guys later, peace out!